on August. Who died and made you God? Exactly. Um, <laughs> now the movie is really, a, to me, it's um, the question of what are a creator's responsibilities to his creations. That, you know, the question of like who is the creator of a movie depends on sort of what stage of the movie you're looking at. A movie like Go, like I created that whole world and I created all those characters, um, but Doug was, Doug Lyman was very involved in sort of like making the movie happen that way. And I'd been hired on to do some other um, popcornier things. And I got to do this movie, um, uh, which was essentially like cross between aliens and clueless. It's about two prep school girls who have to save Manhattan from the apocalypse. That is demonology. You really do know you're here, you're John August. Um, <laughs> um, there's other movies that they're like 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 friends you had from camp. You know, you, you kind of forget about them. And is Charlie's Angels full throttle the kid that beat you up at camp? Charlie's Angels full throttle. <laughs> it's just it's it's just that horrible disappointment. It's the kid who got you know, you know. The kid who could have been the Olympic athlete, but who ended up like doing a lot of drugs. Um, <laughs> going into the second movie, I actually physically made a list of like, these are all the things we don't want to do in the sequel because they're cheesy sequel things. And we did every one of them. You know, we don't want Cameron dancing too much. Like, oh no, she's fucking dancing in every scene now. Um, the first movie I was in the editing room for six weeks on, also sort of getting it into shape. But I think that's why I have an ownership of the first one. Is that commonplace though, to be allowed in post? It depends on, it depends on the property. It depends on on what's working, what's not working, it's relationship with your director, it's your relationship with your studio. So going into the nines, I was very comfortable being in the editing room and um, not all, all afraid to sort of try anything. But the movie is really a, the question of what are a creator's responsibilities to his creations. And um, as a screenwriter, you write a lot of things and most of those things never shoot. And so they're sort of trapped in 12 point courier. You know, I, I also looked at it from the perspective of to the characters in the stories that I write, I must seem like a god because I can, I can throw them off cliffs. I can do anything to them. I can change their world completely, and they have no control. I can give them the illusion of control, and you sort of want your protagonists to seem like they're driving the story, um, but they're not. I'm telling them what to do. So you play a lot of characters at once. Oh, a couple. Most people do. Well, I think my house is haunted. I just, I feel like there's. I feel like there's someone else there. And then last night, I saw something. I think it was me. Somebody there? How many times should the number nine come up? One time at a time. Speak that. I know who you are. I know what you are. I'm not the one deceiving him. He'll figure it out eventually, and when he does, who do you think he's gonna blame? You're not who you think you are. I can get you out of here. I have all of these characters inside of my head, and they want to live. Game is fun unless there are rules. And you make the rules. They're trying to kill me. He's not coming back. Get up. There's something wrong with the world. You feel like a man? Because I'll tell you a little secret. You're not, you're not, you're not. So what happens if I cross this line? And, and did you need to explain the script to people? Or It's always, on any movie you work on, it's always fun to figure out like who's read the script and who hasn't read the script. But particularly on this movie, because like suddenly like they show up the next day and everyone looks different and we're shooting on different cameras and you know half the crew hadn't read the script and really had no idea what was going on. <laughs> it seems to me that you have better relationships with directors than most do. I think if a screenwriter goes in with the expectation that they're going to be respectful, but they're going to give their opinion when their opinion is appropriate. They're much more likely to be met with success. But it also sounds like it's a bit of a, a, a mental shift in some ways that screenwriting is a trade and you are there to drop in and do your job for a while. Is that 
Yeah, there's when you're writing a script, when it's before, kind of before you hand it in, it's actually entirely yours. The process of shooting a movie is the transfer of those decisions from your hands to someone else's hands. Do you have a good relationship with Tim Burton? Because that's where yeah, no, I, and I've had, a, and which has been great. But people would assume like, oh, you must have that really amazing relationship. And like, I have spent in my entire life maybe eight hours around Tim Burton. It's mo like a timber a long Tim Burton meeting is 15 minutes. Throughout the whole process of Big Fish, we had very small little conversations. But you know, basically, you know, I went down to Alabama to to help prep the last two weeks of shooting, and then the first day I showed up on set. And you just don't know what your relationship is going to be. It's like, so I'm watching the monitor, and I'm like, oh, okay, I know how to fix that. It's like, oh, I'm going to tell Tim, I can just see this. I'm like, oh, it's not going to be that kind of movie. All right. And so I, I could I could go and go back to Los Angeles. And how do you stay happy doing that? You don't stay happy. I think that's that's a false goal. I think you need to, to be fluid with it and and accept sort of, you know, that the process is the process. Um, but, you know, happiness isn't always the goal. And the happiest sets and the happiest um, working relationships don't generally make the best movies. Mm -hmm.